Okay, welcome. This is the Leprechaun Canyon drainage in South Central Utah. Uh, our little crew's heading up to do a slot canyon. So I thought I'd take you with me today so you could see, we'll look a little bit at the geology as well, but to just sort of see how some of these technical slot canyons look uh, from top to bottom. So our first path here, you can see some of our crew heading up now is uh, going up the sandstone ridge, maybe 400 feet or so, uh, and then we'll get up to a higher elevation where we can drop in. You can see here, this is the part of the exit narrows of Leprechaun Canyon. Um, and Lepre Leprechaun Canyon, like a lot of these canyons here in Southern Utah, the main unit that forms a lot of these slot canyons is the Navajo sandstone. This is this uh, Jurassic aged, mostly uh, homogeneous. It's all the same throughout the grain size of the material, quartz rich, cross bedded sandstone that formed when this area was a big, vast sand dune area. So we'll head up. We can see some of the cross bedding right here where the beds are at an angle to the primary bedding direction here. Um, but I'm going to probably get winded here, so I'll sign off for now and we'll get some more video as we head up and then definitely as we head down the slot canyons. Here's some of the fun, just kind of slick rock walking when you're coming up these sandstone ribs. I mean, you're right on the rock in big rainstorms. This stuff really kind of crazy with all the water running down it. And you can see some of these harder, more resistant sandstones weathering out. They've got more of this iron oxide cement, which makes them a little bit darker but you just kind of stay on your feet and lean forward a little bit. Just use your toes and friction to work your way up here. Nice view of the crew coming up and the lower part of Leprechaun Canyon. So we've hiked all the way up to the top of the left fork of Leprechaun Canyon. And this is our, our first rappel. So you can see that's a, my son over there, Cole, rappelling down. Um, maybe like a 25 foot rappel that gets us into the drainage. Uh, and then looks like we'll probably have another rappel just below. And then you can see as we get into the more massive sandstone, uh, that's when it kind of will start slotting up. So we've, as you come down these things, you run into dry falls and other obstacles you have to work your way through. And so this is just one of those. So we've got a an anchor here built off of some big boulders where all the people are right here. And then a piece of webbing. And then we hook our ropes to that to rappel off of. So some of the fun of technical canyoneering is just overcoming the obstacles and doing some of the rappels and such. So we'll we'll do a couple more of these as we go down. We've got six adults, three kids, and just show you some of the cool beauty here in Leprechaun Canyon. So we just rappelled off this maybe little 20 foot little dry fall here, and we're now in kind of the meat, I would say, of left fork of Leprechaun Canyon. So I thought I'd maybe take you a little ways down this section of slot canyon. Let's see how technical it gets, but you can see sort of these little pits in the wall and little gouges and chips where as boulders have come down and scoured out this section of canyon, it's actually uh, impacted the wall a bit, leaving some of these little chips and dings. And then of course you can get places where the water circulates and you get these sort of a fluted and sort of pothole shapes along the canyon wall as well. So we'll move down here a little further. Right, pretty narrow. It's about shoulder width through this section, but it has a nice sandy bottom to it. We're catching up to our group here. Looks like they're all kind of backed up. So we'll put the camera away and then move on ahead but single file as you go through these. So we're a little further down left fork and you can see just how tight this thing gets. Here's my foot for scale. Like you 
have to kind of wedge your body through these things. So a couple rocks we had to climb down just back up here. Uh, and in places you're, you're chimneying your body or you're stemming with your feet out to each wall. Um, where I think it gets really tricky is when the floor of the slot canyon literally V's down. Like there's really no sand at the bottom and so your foot kind of gets wedged down along the bottom. This is a nice place to see actively where the slot canyon is deepening. As flash floods come through here, pick up rocks and sediment, those act as the tools, the abrasion tools, to slice through this sandstone. We sometimes use the phrase, you know, slicing it through like a knife through butter. And that's actually a pretty appropriate phrase for uh, how these sandstones are cut by these streams with gradient. We can see a few chalk stones down here. Let's see if we can get by. I'll turn it around for a second so you can see how tight this is. Um, some of you might think this looks miserable, but we're actually having a really good time. Uh, so let's see here. Let's turn it around. And I need to twist around. It's pretty rough on the gear. You end up sort of dragging your your uh, backpack through. So now it's opening up a little bit down here at the bottom. You can kind of walk, uh, but just magical the way the light plays off the sandstone walls. There's some of our group I've caught up to. And then just kind of looking up towards the sky. So this section of slot here is maybe you know, 50 feet or so deep. And then what's fun is you get to these team building spots where you have to kind of help each other. So it looks like we have a chimney. So we have a chimney there, Emily. Oh yeah. Some other little obstacle there where we have to help each other down. So we'll get everyone through here and we'll record a little bit a little further down. So occasionally we get to obstacles like a little water in there that you kind of want to stay out of and stay dry. And so you resort to this textbook technique here of just kind of chimneying across to get past things. We're almost down to the confluence with the main fork of Leprechaun Canyon. And we just came through this lower part here. So we'll chimney past this and then we have one last sort of grand uh, section that we'll work our way through. So we've come down even farther into a Leprechaun Canyon where the left fork and the middle fork meet. And this slot canyon is just amazing how deep and dark and narrow it is. Um, I wanted to film a little bit before it got too dark in here. I'm not sure how this will work. There's no, uh, I didn't bring a headlamp. So, but just amazing how the water has cut such a deep slot in the sandstone. We'll go a little bit further. There's a chalk stone just ahead. So we've got a chalk stone. Oh, some steps there. Wedged into the slot right here. Some folks are going under it. I think I'm going to go over it uh, and continue on. But this is just one of the best parts of Leprechaun. Just incredibly dark. It's maybe two feet wide. So I guess if you're claustrophobic, this would, this might get you, um, but just spectacular. So I'm gonna scramble through this section. And uh, then when we get to the really pretty section that's a little bit wider, we'll wrap up down there. All right, crew, we made it. We are past the most technical parts of Leprechaun Canyon. This is the last little slot out, but this one's nice and easy. Easy to walk through, but still just as beautiful. Kind of look straight up there. You can see the light coming through. But let's go ahead and walk out here to the, where it kind of opens up and uh, we'll kind of end things there. I hope you enjoyed kind of working through this technical slot canyon with me. Uh, maybe you're not able to for whatever reason. So I hope this was a a decent substitute for doing the real thing and giving you a little taste of uh, not just how kind of demanding but also fun and challenging these slot canyons can be but also just how beautiful 
and, uh, and magical and spectacular the scenery is. Uh, so slot canyons generally form when you have a certain set of conditions and those conditions would be um, having a rock type that's homogeneous. So in this case, we have this sandstone that's all uniform grain sizes. Um, the sandstone weathers at the same rate. There's not soft layers and hard layers. And that allows, as the erosion continues, it allows the erosion to cut deep and down into the canyon. So one part of the recipe is having a rock type that's homogeneous. It's pretty much made out of the same stuff, no inconsistencies, no hard parts, soft sections, that sort of thing. The second part of the equation would be to have uh, a fairly steep gradient. So we need to have an area where the topography is steep enough that as that water moves, it has enough erosive force to cut downward uh, through the layers. This section here is really quite exquisite. It goes from being narrow to a little larger, a little more cathedral-like, probably because the rock layers are a little bit, maybe a little bit softer down here, almost like a subway tunnel. Uh, and then the, the third part of the equation is having the right climate conditions for uh, heavy downpours of rain that you can concentrate and funnel into these narrow canyons. And so here in the Colorado Plateau, they have a monsoon season that runs from July through August into early September. And when they get uh, these types of flash flooding events and intense thunderstorms, all that rainwater is, is channelized into these slot canyons. There's not a lot of vegetation or soil to uh, soak up the water. And so that water just gets channeled into the canyons um, and it carries rocks and sand with it. And the rocks and the sand are actually the tools that actually cut and excavate deeper into the sandstone itself. And so uh, it's a pretty rare combination to have those things all coming together. Uh, and that's why slot canyons are somewhat rare. You only find them in, in certain areas. Here, as we kind of look downstream, we can see, um, you know, this kind of wider area here, maybe like 20 feet or so wide, but it's starting to cut uh, a secondary channel into the floor of the sandstone here. So this is kind of how these would form initially. You can see some of the, the harder rocks kind of wedged in the bottom. So whenever there's enough water down there, those get moved around. You can see some of the, the flutes and channels, some of the really uh, beautiful shapes we see in the floor of the slot canyon. And if we come down a little bit further, we can see again, you know, kind of where it's starting to cut a deeper channel again. Um, so really quite remarkable here, these slot canyons in uh, Southern Utah and kind of some of the geology that goes on here. And this is all in the Navajo sandstone, the uh, Jurassic Age sandstone that formed when there was a big sand dune environment that stretched from Mexico all the way down to, uh, or all the way north to Canada. So throughout Utah, Eastern Idaho, Wyoming, parts of Montana, parts of Arizona, Nevada. Um, so we're kind of coming out to the, the end of the canyon here, but just wanted to share a quick little video about the beautiful slot canyon here at the lower end of Leprechaun Canyon. <laughs> 